going to start with the formalities because I can't forget these very important people. Uh, Senator Fiona Nash, the Honourable Barnaby Joyce, Honourable Joel Fitzgibbon, distinguished guests and parliamentarians, ladies and gentlemen, remarkable rural women, and the families who support them, who have travelled to be here tonight, their partners, particularly my partner and my family and supporters who are here tonight, thank you for being here. Anyone who knows me knows that I'm a bit of a storyteller. I don't usually stick to scripts, so I'm going to find this a bit foreign reading what I'm talking to you about. But tonight I thought I would share with you the story, which is actually the story behind the video that you just saw then. It doesn't begin with Once Upon a Time, but I'm going to let you decide whether or not it ends with a happily ever after. I have a vivid recollection of having to leave our family farm in Dark Peak as a seven-year-old girl. I didn't want to go. Why do we have to go, Mum? I don't understand. This is our home. I don't want to live anywhere else. It was the 80s and interest rates were at historic highs, so it was no longer viable for us to farm the family property. I didn't understand exactly what was going on or why we couldn't stay. I just knew that the physical pain as we drove away felt like my heart had been drop kicked out somewhere between the dam paddock and the shearing shed. The farm was not just my home. You know, of course, being a child, it was the place I associated with a feeling of safety and utter contentment, but it was so much more than that. It was the sense of belonging and an incredible bond with rural Australia, which was already firmly imprinted on my narrative. Cut to my mid-20s, when I transitioned from business advisory work into economic development, my role was to source and promote projects that would create jobs and stimulate spending by attracting funding for infrastructure and research to strengthen primary industries. But I could see very clearly that this was only a means to an end. So I dared to voice the opinion at boardroom tables that true sustainable development could only happen if the projects that we were putting forward included provisions for the development of people, people would lead, that would lead the region forward, not just beyond the life of the project, but beyond the current generation of business and community leaders. I saw little point in throwing money at projects or industries if we didn't equip the next generation of leaders with the skills to continue to drive those industries forward and recognise the evolving needs. This next gen vision drove me. Projects that invested time, effort or physical resources in unlocking the potential of our future leaders for the strength and resilience of our regions became my passion. In my professional career, I was instrumental in some of the most exciting and critical economic developments of far north Queensland. As CEO, by the age of 30, I was passionate and gave myself over to this experience, boots and all. But no matter how much I drank from the cup of life, it never seemed to fill me. In fact, quite the opposite. It led to a period in my life that damn near killed me. I walked away from my corporate career at what some might say was my peak. Then a couple of years ago, when a car accident stranded me for several months back in Air Peninsula by some remarkable twist of fate, as I mentioned, I was overwhelmed by that incredible sense of peace and deep connection to something real that I remembered so vividly from my childhood. I realised that I'd returned home. I never left Air Peninsula. Today I live on 18,000 acres of cereal cropping and merino sheep stud in the rural district of Warminder, roughly an hour down the road from Dart Peak, as you know. Now, to tie the story up in a neat bow, you could say that this is where I should really say, and we all lived happily ever after. But at this point, this is where you're about to realise this isn't a fairy tale. You see, when I went back to my hometown of Dart Peak, I found that proverbial tumbleweed blowing down the main street. The school had closed, the businesses were gone, there wasn't even a post office anymore. The pub was still standing, thankfully. The sporting club, which had once been the heart and spirit of that rural community, a place where youths were learning about being role models and the core values that they developed of volunteerism to keep country communities alive was left standing without a team to represent it. The torn astro turf was just flapping in the wind as I looked on and I was incredibly sad. On the drive back to Warminder, I thought about how change was inevitable, that these days there were simply fewer families in the region to run the farms that supported those clubs. Now that farms were considerably bigger and less reliant on human labour, with the significant leaps in agric agricultural technology, there were just less people in the district. Infrastructure and services became an economy of scale which saw a massive decline in rural populations as people relocated to better serviced regional centres or metropolitan areas 
for greater health, education or employment opportunities. And who could blame them if that's where the opportunities were for them at that time? But it was nonetheless quite alarming to see what those changes meant to the communities that I loved that were being left behind. And I thought to myself, if this can all happen within one generation, what remains to pass on the community spirit and the legacy of rural Australia to the next generation? I admit I was afraid of how quickly that where I was living was about to fall fate to that same fate as Dark Peak and it was going to happen within my own lifetime. I'll skip forward because you've seen a part of the video that I didn't know that you were going to see. <laughs> as I sat at the entrance to the Warminder Oval, wrought iron gates, which were once a grand statute to that club, I stopped and stared at the relic, recognising that it was symbolic, not just the end of an era, but the end of a vital service to that community. This is where children once came, not just to play sport, but to learn to lead, develop a value system of volunteerism, cooperation and community leadership. With the loss of local commerce and trade and the closure of schools, in so many instances, the only remaining institutions that teach that value system of volunteerism and actively develop leaders are those sporting clubs. So when you think of it in the context that sporting clubs are incubators for future leaders, it's a serious tipping point for rural Australia. Sadly, this isn't just a story about my town. And those of you who saw a recent report on Landline called The Final Siren about two uh, once ferociously competitive clubs merging to save their communities. That was once a league with 58 teams. So what I guess I'm trying to say is that sporting clubs are the fabric of our rural communities. They network our people. They support, encourage and prom promote our community spirit, which is what makes people want to stand up and fight for their regions when they do start contracting. And these are the very qualities that we need to instill in the next generation of leaders to produce advocates for our region a voice for rural Australian communities, boosting morale which makes us battle the odds and move past survival mode into adaption, adaption to change and eventually evolution and innovation. So this is how the concept of my project, the Champions Academy, was born. A leadership initiative designed to create regional strength and resilience using sporting clubs to attract and mentor future leaders and encourage them to recognise their responsibility as future leaders of their community and voices for their region. I took this concept to the Rural Industries Research and Development Corporation and was incredibly fortunate to have their support for them to see my vision for this program. The opportunity allowed me to develop the Champions Academy concept and deliver a pilot program this year in Air Peninsula, where 14 young ambassadors and their mentors have completed their leadership de development program I'm now in the process of refining and packaging that project to be able to take it to other regions in rural Australia, and I'm really looking forward to taking that further. But the opportunity provided by this award and the REDIC team, which are made possible, the, possible by the wonderful sponsors that you've heard named tonight, and I'd like to particularly acknowledge our platinum sponsor, Westpac Agribusiness, have enabled me to do so much more than deliver a standalone project. The Rural Women's Award experience doesn't just give rural women a platform for their voice to be heard or their idea to be promoted. It connects them with a network of like-minded people for their projects, vision for their industry and to see a determination to make a difference. This is a network of enablers who support each other to achieve, encourage each other to thrive and dare each other not just to dream big but to deliver big. I'd like to pay a special tribute to Cheryl, Carol, Sally, Cindy, Tress and Katie who have made this experience about more than my project and my personal development. Getting to know you throughout this awards process, I was in awe of you all. I drew inspiration from your sense of purpose, your depth of knowledge, your outstanding ability and the way you demonstrated the courage of your convictions. I want to use this example of this wonderful group of women to tell other rural women around the country that women like these are the reason it's so important that they take the opportunity to become involved in the Rural Women's Award. The people that you'll meet, the experiences that you'll have and what, will you, what you will learn outweigh anything that you can possibly imagine. The fundamental philosophy for the Champions Academy is that a champion is a person whose actions motivate and inspire others and leave a legacy. To the future applicants of the Rural Women's Award, I say stand up and be counted. Be a champion of your region, a champion of your industry, a champion of change. Seize this opportunity with both hands. Thank you.